Good morning, good afternoon or good evening. This is Roger Gilbert. I'm in the Rongo Rongo Live studio reporting on behalf of Milling and Grain magazine. Uh, today we have a very special guest in our studio. It's a Alexander Ferrin. He's Alexander is the Digital Transformation Specialist at by Gora and by Gora is in, from Munich in Germany and his role is responsible for the company in, in public and building relationships with key partners. He leads the innovative team at Bygora and is the main decision maker within the company. You might ask, what is Bygora? Bygora. Bygora is the world's first digital B2B marketplace specialized in the international trade of novel proteins. And we're talking a lot about proteins these days and the alternative proteins that are becoming available in the milling industry. The platform offers digitalization tools for both suppliers and buyers of novel proteins and greatly reduces trading costs and the complexity for both sides. So Alexander is going to take us through how the platform came about, but more importantly, what the uh, proteins, these novel proteins are, they're involved with. So just let me uh, invite Alexander to jo join us. Welcome, Alexander. Hello, Roger. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, nice, to jo nice of you to join us. Now, Alexander, Bygora is relatively a new company. Can you tell me a little bit, just briefly, the history of Bygora? Yes, of course. Um, so our founder and CEO um, has worked in the byproduct trade industry for quite some years. And um, when I met him around one and a half years ago, um, we, we met and I came with the digitalization knowledge and we found that the traditional industry was just very undigitized and we could see a lot of potential and cost savings. And at the same time, we found more about insect proteins and alternative proteins in, in general and saw that there's just a huge opportunity to help this um, sustainable uh, industry gain some more traction. So uh, we decided to found Bygora and um, yeah, so for one and a half years we've now been working on the digitalization and are now ready to soon launch our marketplace. Okay, and this marketplace, I mean, you've explained briefly about uh, alternative proteins or, or these novel proteins, but how, how did you become aware that novel proteins has become such an important issue in particularly in the feed milling, aquaculture and pet food industries? Mm. Yeah, so um, we've been seeing in general the effects of uh, climate change and how our food systems um, and, and the amounts that they produce today cause some issues um, on the planet. So we have methane emissions, um, we have deforestation and especially overfishing. And we see that the industry is looking for alternatives and has been looking for quite some years. Um, and we want to make an impact there and uh, sort of reduce the unsustainable part and help companies who bring a more sustainable and a next generation uh, to this market. So the buying side of this industry uh, can really go the next step and make sure that we're carbon neutral in the next few years. Yeah, I mean, that's a fantastic uh, objective. Um, how has the response been? I mean, are people sort of uh, responding positively to this yes, development? Yes, absolutely. Yeah? Yes, uh, so we've got a lot of uh, very positive response. Um, We've just opened the pre-registration for the website about four weeks ago. Um, we're growing at around 12 uh, pre-registrations per week. So we get a lot of response. We have now talked to a lot of suppliers and buyers alike. And uh, we got so much feedback to really understand now how we can bring this uh, industry forward. Yeah, and when, when, some, when a company registers, for instance, say um, a company wanted to use a novel protein, I mean, what sort of security, longer term security does it have for for its uh, product supply? Because in our industry, it's all about, you know, just in time uh, supply of protein, I, I, I would imagine. So how, how do you overcome that um, on a platform? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we think that uh, by sort of bringing everyone to one table, that's that's really the key component that will make this successful for every participant. Because right now, if you're a supplier and you might be a little bit smaller and, and some of the buyers are just too big for you, and the buyers only have the option to find really, really big suppliers. 
And uh, with the marketplace, we have a whole new dynamic where one buyer can make sure he can buy from 10 or 20 different suppliers um, while making sure that the quality stays the same we, because we have constant quality checks with SGS and other authorities. And uh, we think for both sides, this really opens up the market to more um, to a bigger mix of, of different sizes of businesses. Mm. So in a contract, for instance, th- there would be a profile of the protein, a, a description and a, an analysis that, that they would buy on? Yes, so basically you can imagine it like buying a product on Amazon. Um, you can click on the product, you will see all the specifications, you can see the nutritional profile, um, you can see the, uh, the documents that are related to it. And once you come to an agreement and you negotiate the price and what documents you need ex- uh, additionally, um, that is when uh, it, it's basically the, the pro- uh, process that we know so far. So the trade will uh, work exactly the same way. We have the same documentation and quality checks. Um, the only thing is it is way, way easier to do, more convenient, and uh, you can do it from anywhere in the world. Yeah, yeah. And what about delivery? I mean, is that part of the contract as well? I mean, is there issues around delivering small amounts of product across borders? Mm-hmm. Yes, we're working on this. We don't do this from launch. Uh, we've been trying to partner up with uh, platforms that do logistics booking. But as well, no, we need um, very high quality standards and certifications for the logistics company as well. And uh, there is no databases yet that allows us to um, work with a large um, logistics provider because um, we don't know which companies actually have the certification. But we're working on that and we believe that next year, mid next year, we'll definitely solve this. And our plan is definitely to onboard as many partners as possible. So we end up digitizing the entire supply chain. Yeah, sounds uh, very creative. And, uh, you know, obviously everybody will wish you luck in this. Uh, what, what sort of targets are you finding buyers or traders interested in? Is it, is it very specialized aqua feed or pet food or is it more general? Are, are there, is the interest coming from more general animal feed companies? Mm-hmm. We actually see, um, especially in Europe, we see quite a lot of buyers from the pet food industry and a lot of interest from the uh, aqua feed industry. Uh, The pet food industry has the um, highest willingness to pay and the cost of novel proteins is still quite high. So that's why mainly uh, this is the buying uh, industry here. But the aqua industry is really looking at it and doing a lot of feed trials to find out um, if these novel proteins can work with uh, uh, in, instead of fish meal, so they can actually scale up their production. And we also see uh, a lot uh, towards the uh, the end consumer side where we have um, sort of backyard chicken feed, um, actually the insect frass, for example, uh, is a really good fertilizer. So we really see it across different platforms here. So Alexander, you know, looking at the um, type of novel proteins, first of all, what are the novel proteins? And can you kind of rank them or value them in 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 quantity? You know, quantity of available. I mean, availability. Maybe maybe that's a v- too early to ask this question, but uh, it might give some background as to as to to our readers and viewers uh, as to what what to expect in the way of novel proteins. Mm. Yes, so the novel proteins are are generally um, speaking the insect proteins, which are the largest by size, and it's also the the industry um, of the ones that we're doing um, that are the furthest ahead in in research, um, followed by the algae industry, um, algae proteins, and then we have single cell proteins, um, which show great potential in many ways, but they haven't really been uh, going to the production stage, they're still just researching. So the insect market itself, um, if we just look at Europe, uh, last year in total, we only had around 6,000 tons of insect meal produced. Um, We do see that now the first companies have gone from just showing a demo plant to actually producing and now scaling up. Mm -hmm. We see large amounts of investments being uh, input into the insect industry. Um, So this one will be growing very, very fast now. Uh, we actually predict that by 2025 we will far exceed the 2 million mark um, especially also because um, we we can accelerate this growth with the digitalization that we're doing and the algae market is also very interesting to us because the first microalgae are now evolving that try to solve the issue of uh, the lack of fish oil or how to replace fish oil 
Um, and there we actually have algae which have very, very high omega-3 uh, profiles. And so we see great potential in actually the novel proteins working together. So we can't replace fish meal one-to-one -one with insects, but what we can do is uh, we can feed fish with insects and algae. So we have the omega-3 and we have the high protein content. Mm, fantastic. You mentioned the, the number 2 million. Are we talking 2 million what? 2 million tons? That's 2 million tons of um, insects produced. That's uh, wet weight. Um, and uh, it goes into to various different applications afterwards. Yeah, yeah. No, f fascinating, simply fascinating. And I think maybe the, the platform or platform like this give confidence to the producers that they have an outlet, uh, potential outlet for their product without, without being too restricted if they're still s producing smaller volumes. Mm. Yes, we think it's actually really important for the situation as it is right now, because what we can do is we can offer the buyer side a place where they can just buy small amounts to try it out. We will connect them with feed trial companies if they don't do their own, their own feed okay. trials. Yep. And it's just an enabler now at this stage of the, mm. of the industry. Mm. As I keep saying, uh, absolutely fascinating. Alexander, look, this is a, a great initiative uh, on P on on behalf of Biogora, and uh, we wish you all the luck and, and success in the future. Uh, we'd like to have you back, uh, possibly this time next year, uh, to tell us how it's, it's going and whether you're achieving your goals. Uh, but I'm sure we'll see things in the press and coming through uh, over time anyway. But um, yeah, good luck to you and your colleagues. And um, let's see if we can't uh, introduce more novel proteins, which the industry uh, desperately needs in terms of not only fish meal replacement, but just having alternative sources of high quality proteins uh, that are efficiently produced. But um, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much to you. Okay, bye for now. Bye.